Hey YouTube, it's Eric from the Reptile Room, and today we got a new gecko in. Let's check this out. Here it is. I don't have a fancy binomial scientific name for this little one, uh, but I'm going to look into that a little bit later. This is commonly known as an Australian spiny tail gecko. Now they get bigger than this, but they don't get huge. This is just a little youngin' right here. And these guys are pretty unique. I've never actually seen one in person before, but I'm going to try to pick this little one up here. I don't want to squish him, he's so little. There we go, what do we think of that? So interesting colors on this guy, I'm noticing right out the front gate. Uh, and really pretty scalation as well. So we've got these faded grays, cool orange on the tail. Now you can see these little spines running along the tail. Those aren't actually sharp at all. Those aren't even spines. Those are just little, little sort of skin horns poking up, kind of like the eyelashes on a crested gecko. Uh, but these guys have a really unique defense mechanism. Uh, what they'll actually do when they're frightened is they're going to rear that tail up in the air and then rear themselves up to look all big and haunched up. And then they're going to stick that tail up and they have these little ducts running from kind of like a little uh, musk gland uh, at the base of the tail there. And they have these little ducts running up to underneath these spines and they can kind of squirt this, this foul tasting nasty smelling fluid out of their predators which is going to make those predators go, oh, that's just, that's just great. Uh, and this can give these guys a little opportunity to make a runoff for it. So welcome to the reptile room, little one. Let's set up a home for them. So for starters, I've got this Exotero Nana enclosure. It's uh, 8 by 8 by 12 inches tall, which is small, but a good start for this guy. And I've got some bioactive substrate in there that I'm going to throw some seeds into to get some plants growing, as well as a little bit of sand. Uh, I don't want to use pure sand with this, but if I mix it in with a coconut fiber, it should work quite nicely, hold its shape, and also resemble the substrate that these guys would be living on or around in the wild. I've also got some lovely driftwood here. This is going to offer him some climbing opportunities. Um, and I've got this, I don't know what kind of wood this is, but it's quite pretty and has a lot of clinging opportunities. Uh, and then of course I've got a fake little cactus in there, as well as some rocks uh, for stuff to rub up against while shedding and also just to offer more uh, climbies. I've got some plant litter that I'm throwing in here as well, and the isopods are going to use this as fuel to fire themselves up and grow and colonize in there. Uh, some cutoffs of a dead fern are going in there as well. And I'm just going to straighten those out. Uh, let's see, next I'm going to add more sticks I think. The more climbing opportunities the better. A small tank that's full of climbing opportunities has more surface area for an animal to use than a large tank with no climbing opportunities. So I want to make sure I crowd this thing out so he has lots of places to hold on to. I'm just going to straighten some of these sticks out a bit more horizontally so he's got some good areas where he can bask in the UV light because these are a nocturnal gecko but they will make use of UV light um, to help them synthesize vitamin D3 and process calcium properly. Uh, now these are an insectivorous lizard so I don't have to worry about using kale or any other calcium binders. Little Jiminy the Cricket here is going to pop up and say hello and then we're going to go back to the build. Uh, so I've just got to throw a zip strap around here. This is going to hold everything together because I don't want any of these sticks to fall onto this uh, tiny little gecko. Um, and then I'll cut off the excess there just to keep things looking good and mask it up with a little bit of moss. Moss goes well in everything. And there we go. I think we're done. We're going to give the glass a little wipe down and we're going to introduce our gecko. And there we have it. Our enclosure for our northern spiny tail gecko. I've got some UV light up top there, that's important for these guys. They are nocturnal, but they are uh, sometimes no observed uh, out basking during the daytime out in the wild, so we want to offer that for them. Uh, and a thermal gradient of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so you don't want to get things too hot, and since this enclosure is quite little, uh, I reckon that UV light is probably going to throw just as much heat as I need. I'm going to check again in a couple hours here and adjust as I need to, but uh, I think we've got her far enough to go. We've got some cleanup crew in there, got lots of climbing opportunities, and yeah, this enclosure is small, but for context, this is the gecko going in it. Very itty bitty little fella, or fellette, I don't actually know. Check that out. Cutest little thing, isn't it? Oh. Okay. 
you have an earway. 